On the Super Review, let's take a look at the TRN V30. Now, this is not the first in-ear monitor from the company TRN that we've tried on this channel, and it's probably not gonna be the last, but it is, from what I can tell, the latest. The TRN V30 is a three driver hybrid in-ear monitor, and it's coming in at under $30, which is a very competitive range. There's some really decent stuff at 30 bucks, but I think right now, still my favorite in-ear at $30 is the Moondrop Crescent. Is this thing gonna become my new favorite for 30 bucks? Well, it's looking a little KZ. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but let's go ahead and open up the box. We'll find out what we get inside the TRN V30, and then I'll give these things a listening test and compare them to other $30 earphones, and I'll come back and I'll let you know what do I think. First spin, first spin. Do you see that one? First try, not bad. All right, so we got the TRN V30 sitting here in a box, and we'll do a quick tour. Not gonna be a ton to find out about it, except, well, we can see that the design, I don't know, what do you think? Is that ripping off KZ? Is that too close? I think it's a decent looking headphone, at least from the outside. We'll find out what it looks like on the inside. So down here, we know that it's a six hybrid drivers design. And by six, they just mean that there's three drivers in each earphone, including two balanced armatures and one dynamic. Uh, over here, we know that we've got the no mic version because I don't need microphones. At least I think I've got the no mic version. That says mic. I don't know what those other three options say, but I've got those two. Well, we're not gonna find out much about it from the box. So let's just go ahead and crack it open and find out what's inside. All right, we got the TRN V30 completely unboxed. And for $30, this is about what you should expect. You get three pieces of paperwork, which is totally normal. You do get interchangeable tips, including some in large, small, and mediums pre-installed, which again, very typical. I'm actually kind of surprised that I have clear tips because I don't know, I kind of expected to see TRN's typical, actually here in the picture on the box, you actually see their typical ear tips, which are black with a, red core. Maybe maybe I bought a color that comes with these tips. I think that's actually a pretty decent look. And then we get to this cable, which is typical TRN cable. And I think this is actually a pretty nice cable, especially for a $30 earphone. I think this is nicer than what you get with most KZ headphones. Um, and then you get up here and you've got preformed ear hooks, which is exactly what I like to see. You get to the buds, which are KZ looking. However, the shape of them is definitely different than what I've seen. All right, so what these things look like a lot to me is they look like KZ AS10s or AS06 or even the ES4s. But when you turn them around to the side, you can tell that the shape of these is not at all like those KZs. These things actually have a pretty form-fitting design. I'm kind of excited to see what that looks like or what that feels like in my ear. Looking at the bud, it looks like we've got the balanced armatures directly in the nozzle with the dynamic driver sitting here behind them. That's a pretty typical configuration, but it's not gonna tell us a ton about what this thing sounds like. So I'm gonna have to hook these things up to my Walkman, give them a listening test and compare these to some other $30 earphones. Specifically, what I'm interested to compare these things to is, let's see, the Moondrop Crescent, which is my favorite $30 earphone. And then one other earphone I'm interested in comparing them to is the TRN IM1, which is something I actually bought a while ago and I never unboxed it. So I still have it sitting here in a box. I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up separately. And these things cost about $5 more than the V30. Just looking at the V30, I'm pretty optimistic about the way that these things will fit. But again, that's what we'll find out in the listening test and I'll come back and I'll let you know.
All right, I've been listening to the TRN V30 for a bit and comparing these to some other $30 IEMs, including TRN's own IM1, as well as the KZ ZSN, because I don't know, I feel like these are, these are all in like the same price range. And I think a lot of people are gonna be cross shopping these. And there's definitely some, some ways that I think these are, are better than those other two and some in which I think these are not necessarily the best. We can start by talking about the build quality, which is, I don't know, if I'm honest, I think it's one of the weaker aspects of this headphone. They're just, I don't have any other IEMs that are this lightweight and plasticky feeling. Like, can you, is that coming across at all? I don't think it is, man. These things are just, I don't know, they're decently attractive, I suppose, uh, for a $30 IEM. Um, and they don't feel like they're gonna break. They don't feel like they're not sturdy or anything. They just feel really, like something you got out of a gumball machine or something like that. For me, the bigger issue with the build though is actually down to the fit. Uh, I, I, let me see if I can show this for you real quick. Noise isolation is actually pretty good, but um, so these things fit in the ear and they're kind of molded to fit in the ear pretty tightly. But when I've got them in place correctly, like this ear hook is not really going around my ear correctly, right? So if, if I've got this thing around my ear, if I've got this ear hook around my ear, and these things are not inserted quite right. Whereas if I've got them inserted quite right, then the ear hook's not able to go around the outside of my ear. And maybe that's a me problem. I don't know, but it is an issue that I have with this earphone that I don't think I've run into with anything else, except actually the TRN IM1. I've got the exact same problem and it might even be worse on the IM1. Thankfully, in terms of sound, these things are actually pretty solid. And in this price range at $30, the sound signature on this is actually kind of unique. I would say that I would describe these as kind of a warm, flat sound, which is to say there's not a lot of emphasis on the upper mid range. So if you're really into vocals, you might find these kind of flat and boring, but if you're into bass and, and lower mids and, and just like kind of a, a nice, smooth, relaxed sound, these things do a really solid job. Um, the treble on these is actually a little bit aggressive, a little bit, a little bit strident in my opinion, um, which does kind of counteract the, the smoothness in the lower mid range, but it does also make it feel a little bit, a little bit dynamic and gives it a pretty good sense of space, especially for $30. You could, if you wanted to kind of describe it as like a $30 version of the BGVP DM6. I think the sound signature, at least the, the way that I would describe them is very similar. Now, these are not as detailed, definitely not as good sounding as the DM6, but at $30, you don't expect that. But if you want kind of a taste of what the DM6 sounds like, you could try these out. Now I compared these directly to TRN's own IM1s. And just overall, I prefer the sound on these. I found that the IM1 was a little bit duller sounding and, and even less upper mid range emphasis and just generally a little bit flatter sounding. If that sounds appealing to you, you, you might like the IM1, I guess, but uh, personally, I found the V30 to be the more appealing of the two. Maybe the more interesting comparison, however, is with the KZ ZSN. Now the ZSN has got, I, I would say, a, a more traditional V sound, right? With a little bit more elevated bass, a little bit more elevated upper mid range and treble. Um, so if you're into upper mid range, and I typically am, you might prefer the sound of the KZ ZSN. And like normally I would prefer the KZ ZSN, but, or at least that sound signature. But between the two, I think that these are actually doing a little bit better job. And I think, I think most of it's gonna just come down to the smoothness in that lower mid range and the, the better sense of sound stage that you get with the V30. If I were to rate the TRN V30 out of five stars, I'd give these things, I think three stars out of five. And it's not really because of the sound signature that it's not a higher score. I think the sound on these is pretty solid. It's not my favorite signature, but it's pretty well done in these things. For me, the bigger issues are just kind of the, the cheap feeling build quality, as well as the kind of funky fit. Um, it, it makes me not really want to use this headphone, despite the fact that it does sound pretty solid. Uh, at $30, my money, it's not going to be for the ZSN or these either. It's still going to be the Moondrop Crescent, but if you want something that's a little bit flatter, warmer sound, a little bit more relaxed, you might actually like the V30. If you're interested in checking out the TRN V30, of course, I've got links in the description down below. While you're down there, you can hit the like button. If you like the video, you can subscribe to the channel, and then I'll see you on the next Super Review.